Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at temperature dependent control circuits, also known as switching circuits. So let's get started. There are two types of temperature dependent circuits we're going to look at. These are the low temperature and the high temperature circuits. So all we mean by low temperature is a circuit that's going to switch on when temperature gets too low. And the high temperature circuit is a control circuit that switches on when temperature gets too high. So let's start by looking at the low temperature circuit. So you'll see here we have our input on the left, our potential divider circuit, our processing part in the middle with our transistor and a resistor, and then our output up here, which is our LED with a series resistor. And the main thing I want to point out here is that for the low temperature control circuit, we have the thermistor, which is at the bottom here. So it's a circuit that's going to be responding to a change in temperature, so we need to have something that can change resistance with temperature, and that is a thermistor. So we've got a thermistor down as the lower component for a low temperature circuit, and then we've got a variable resistor as the upper component. And I'm going to take you through the steps of how this works. So the first step is to talk about what happens to the resistance of the thermistor as temperature decreases, because we're talking about a low temperature circuit, remember, as temperature decreases goes down. So it says that when when temperature decreases, the resistance of the thermistor increases. And we know that from our rule for thermistors, which was turd. So we said that for thermistors, temperature up, resistance down. So as temperature goes up, the resistance of the thermistor goes down. But here, remember the opposite is true of this. So temperature down, resistance up. So when temperature goes down, the resistance of the thermistor goes up. So now what we can say is because the resistance of the thermistor increases, then the voltage across the thermistor must increase as well. And this is because V is proportional to R from Ohm's law. And this says that the voltage is directly proportional to the resistance. And all this means is that whatever happens to the resistance happens to the voltage as well. So because the resistance of the thermistor increases, then the voltage across it must be increasing as well. Now remember we said in the video on the control circuits, the basics, that the voltage across the lower component is equal to the voltage across the transistor. So if I know that my voltage here is increasing across the thermistor, then that means that the voltage across my transistor is also increasing. So when this transistor, which is an NPN transistor in this example, when this switches on at its switch on voltage, which is roughly 0.7 volts, then this will in turn switch on the LED and will produce light. And we've got that as our last two steps here. So when the voltage across the NPN transistor reaches 0.7 volts, it switches on. This in turn switches on the LED. So these are our steps for how the low temperature control circuit works when we've got a thermistor as the lower component. So just to recap, we're saying that as temperature goes down, the resistance of the thermistor goes up. So the voltage across the thermistor goes up. So that means the voltage across the transistor here goes up as well, which means that switches on and that in turn switches on the LED. Now you could also think about this backwards if you know that the LED is on. So you could say that this is on, so the voltage across the transistor must be increasing, it must be high enough for this to be switched on, which means that the voltage across the thermistor must be high, which means that the resistance of the thermistor must be high as well, which means that the temperature must be low. Just to show you an example of this low temperature circuit, you can ignore the text around it. We're looking at this one here, which has a MOSFET and a heater. And you'll notice that again, we've got the thermistor as the lower component and our variable resistor as the upper component. And notice what happens as the temperature decreases. So as temperature goes down, we know that the resistance of the thermistor goes up. So therefore the voltage across the thermistor should go up as well, as we can see. And then when the voltage across the thermistor reaches about 1.8 volts, which is roughly the switch on voltage for a MOSFET, around two or 1.8, then as the voltage there reaches 1.8, you'll see the heater has now turned on. And that's because the voltage across the MOSFET has increased, and so it's reached its switch on voltage, which means that the heater has now turned on. Now the second type of temperature control circuit or switching circuit to look at is for the high temperature. So we're going to look at what happens when temperature increases or goes up. Now I just want to point out the difference between this circuit and the low temperature control circuit. And the only difference is that we've now swapped the positions of the thermistor and the variable resistor. So the thermistor is now the upper component and the variable resistor is now the lower component, but everything else is the same. We've still got an NPN transistor and an LED. And in actual fact, this circuit has an extra step in it. And we're going to see the extra step where we look at the steps of how this thing actually works. So the first step says when temperature increases, the resistance of the thermistor decreases. So that is again using the rule for thermistors, turd. Temperature up, resistance down. So when temperature goes up, the resistance of the thermistor goes down. 
And remember that means that the voltage across the thermistor goes down as well. And that is from V is proportional to R. So remember whatever happens to the resistance happens to the voltage as well. So this causes the voltage across the thermistor to decrease, which must mean that the voltage across the variable resistor increases. And the reason for that is that this is a potential divider circuit, remember. So if the voltage across this one is decreasing, then the voltage across this one must be increasing. And that is because in a potential divider circuit, your two components here will be taking a share of the supply voltage. So if this one is now taking a smaller share of the supply voltage, this one now takes a bigger share of the supply voltage. So we can then say that when the voltage across the NPN transistor reaches about 0.7 volts, it switches on. This in turn switches on the LED. So we're saying because the voltage across this lower component increases, then remember the voltage across the lower component is equal to the voltage across the transistor. So this one increases. So when this one increases, then this voltage increases as well, which will turn on the transistor and that will in turn switch on the LED. So just to recap this, when temperature goes up, the resistance of the thermistor goes down. So the voltage across the thermistor goes down. So that means the voltage across this variable resistor goes up. And that means the voltage across the transistor goes up, which switches it on, which in turn switches on the LED. So you need to be able to explain these steps. Now, remember, you can also work backwards here. So we could say that if the LED is on in this case, then that means the transistor here is on and that means the voltage across the lower component is high, which means the voltage across this upper component is low, which means that the resistance of the thermistor is low, and that in turn means that the temperature is high. Now, just to show you an example of a high temperature circuit, again, you can ignore all the text here, but we're just looking at this one on the right-hand side now. So have a look at what happens when temperature increases. So we're saying that when temperature goes up, the resistance of the thermistor goes down, so that means the voltage across the thermistor goes down. So the voltage across the variable resistor as the lower component must go up. And then you'll notice when the voltage reaches 1.8 volts, then that means the MOSFET also reaches its switch on voltage about 1.8 volts. And this will then switch on the fan. And lastly, it's worth pointing out that you could also see low temperature or high temperature control circuits used to switch things off. So we've seen here a heater and a fan turning on for both the low temperature and the high temperature control circuits, but they could also be used to switch off devices. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.